And in the moonlight, things get kind of kooky. Girl, you know they do. And your parents don't respect me as a man. In the moonlight, things get kind of bonkers. You think you thought you're thunker. Friends would maybe lend a helping hand. Okay, that's enough. Um, what a great song. Uh, yeah, you, th you think you thought you thunk your is one of my favorite lines in that whole song. And, and then just, and in the moonlight, things get, get delirious, searching for mysterious, whipped cream poppies, chemistry cruising, and in the moonlight, things get kind of crazy, they try to extricate me out of these absurd zigzagged pants. I love how Homestar Runner, like, the humor varies from, like, making fun of retro video games to, you know, just adding Shakespearean accent marks over random words. Um, we are really cleaning up here on Fluidity. I'm your host, Helium Lemon. You've probably figured that out if you're a subscriber. Which, if you're not a subscriber, then what are you doing? Seriously. Oh, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, mm, mm, ah, mm. If you are a subscriber, then you would get me a sore a, a, a throat, a throat coat. That's not the right way to go. Although I like King Tut just kind of hanging out back there. Um, so we're trying to get to that uh, um, area over there. Uh, and if you didn't see where over there was, it was it was on the right page, kind of in the lower left corner. Yeah, there. So. Chapter 3 just feels like the most complicated chapter. I don't know what it is about it. May maybe just, I don't know, the main page is the most intimidating. But I don't know, you know, chapter 4 is... Chapter 4 is quite tricky, but, you know, chapter 3 is always one of the most intimidating to me to try and clean it up afterwards. But I... I don't know, you know. It's also, like, you know... Chapter th chapter three can be frustrating because it's like you make one mistake and it's like ah oh, now I have to do five minutes of balloon n -n -n -ning, uh, with a cloud all over again and so that's the only, that's one of the major things um, I was not thinking I was going to record another episode today um, the, I mean the footage is this footage has been edited together already but. Um, it's like 10 p.m. But uh, I found that I, I actually like recording um, videos at 9 or 10 p.m. I just f feel a little looser uh, for some reason. Uh, not quite as coherent, but <laughs> a little funnier maybe. I don't know. I'm just a little bit more... I'm more relaxed in the evenings, but it's not always necessary necessarily a good thing because I can still be extremely scatterbrained but uh I don't know yeah so speaking of slow uh slow puzzles with the balloon uh I hope you like uh waiting in hallways waiting for uh purple evil purple pe people eaters no I don't know purple spikes to pass by don't pass me by, don't make me cry, don't make me blue, cause you know, darling, my name is Ringo, and I'm not, oh, <laughs> I'm not the best songwriter in the Beatles. Not that anybody said he, he was. Uh, so yeah, you gotta get the balloon, and you gotta take it over here. But actually... You don't want to take it over here just yet, but I'm I'm leaving this all in and the um uh for um in order to keep this authentic. Uh authenticity is still one of my main priorities on this channel. Um so yeah, you have to get this cog. And of course, if the cog falls in the lava, you lose a life. Um so Gotta time it so that the cog goes across these elevators. Um, 
and that didn't work out quite so well. Uh, the cog has to go over that little hill. Um, I guess they, the developers put in that little hill because uh, they wanted to be forgiving, so they didn't want it to go in the lava. Oh, that was close. They didn't want it to go to start moving right away if you weren't ready. But I don't know, it caught, it caught me off guard just then. And then I, I realized my mistake. I was like, oh yeah, the bas the bassoon, the balloon has to latch on to the cog. Been doing too much research about Henry Cow, man. I love Henry Cow, what a great band. Um, take the balloon and you have to uh, move it up and over to attach to the cog, so you remember last month, it was like my Christmas break, and uh, I was saying like, oh, I've been watching a lot of uh, Rayman 2, that a, that's a really good game. Uh, yeah, I did, I had a really lovely time watching that game, and uh, I had a dream about it last night. That's about it, I just, I had a dream about Rayman 2. Um, Yeah, Rayman 2 has a really lovely atmosphere. Um, I was surprised by all the um, sort of, uh, I guess, 360 degree rotation that's in the game. Because there's a part in the game where you can um, use, like, the missile rocket to ride up like the walls of a building and then you can kind of go like you can walk on the ceiling you can walk on the bottom of it um and that kind of reminded me of like um mario galaxy but also like this very strange game um called starshot space circus fever that i discovered i just love discovering like these uh obscure uh like 3d platformers from from the late 90s early 2000s just from that very odd offbeat era um it reminded me of starshot space circus fever it just gave me that kind of vibe and then uh also like when you're fighting the final boss and oh there was another yeah there was like a you were riding a chair on a kind of tram, but the chair could like rotate a full like 360 degrees so you could hang upside down and all these different things and you had to to avoid obstacles. Um, I don't know, I just thought all the sort of 360 degree stuff, I, I had never really seen that in such an early game, you know, but maybe there are other games. Uh, that's Rainbow Drop number 81 which means there are only eight left in the game. That's crazy. So, we've pretty much cleaned out uh, chapter three. Um, as far as rainbow drops, not as far as puzzle pieces yet. Um, still missing this one on the main page, and uh, I could not for the life of me remember how to get it, but uh, eventually, uh, I found it on JBizzo49's walkthrough. It was funny, I saw him just kind of wandering around this level, and then before he got it, I was like, oh, that's probably where it is. The last uh, mini rainbow droplet. But I don't know, it was kind of hard to find. Um, but he does, like, in his video descriptions for that playthrough, uh, uh, keep all his, um, it's, it's very organized, kind of, um, I don't know what that object is that it has so much momentum, like, if it's something metal, you wouldn't think it would have that mo much momentum just to just fly into the lava, but anyway, it made me sort of, like, wonder, like, oh, should I be doing that with this LP? Should I be... Um, being more organized, you know? Um, should I, you know, put stuff in the video description? 
so that people can actually use this as a walkthrough because like otherwise if they're looking for one specific thing they just have to look through the whole they have to watch the whole thing until they find it which i hope is not too much of a chore because this is not a, a super long game even though yeah this is it's gonna end up being like maybe uh 28 parts but you know it's pleasant to watch and you don't have to worry like I, i'm putting 100 in the in the description you know i'm, I'm definitely going for every last rainbow drop and every last puzzle piece because i'm a completionist uh i like this puzzle um it's got some pretty cool ideas um Yeah, I like the way that it makes you switch between uh, cloud and ice. Um, it also has that fun uh, maze, maze-like part of it, which we'll see in a second. It's got this, got this elevator here. I don't, I don't know why the elevator should be such a integral part of the puzzle. It's not. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, it's got this fish, which is protected by a door. Um, it's got this, uh, anvil, weight, and, uh, huh, I wonder if there's any- Oh, there's a- there's a glint in the wall. There's a, a tweezer glint. I'm gonna be a mental floss tycoon. Um, yay, obscure music reference for the win. It's not obscure if you have good taste, but then again, that's kind of subjective. Like, there are lots of people with- good taste who just haven't gone as far as I have and I've gone pretty far and I've found some weird music but anyway yeah more more people know about Frank Zappa than you know I sort of give credit for like people of that generation so I believe once you set these two anvils down uh, then it opens that door so yeah yes indeed I like that. Um, I like puzzles that involve weight. They're just satisfying. Um, like that one uh, in in the uh, Red Queen's Castle from Alice in Wonderland, where you have to make the different chess pieces visible and invisible, so they. Uh, so they push down a, you know, one of, it's like a, a scale, you know, like, like two scales and one goes up, the other goes down. You know what I mean? Like Libra, the star sign, no, I don't know. I miss Tim Burton, Alice in Wonderland and all its good uh, abilities, power-ups, like, uh, and visibility and perspective and telekinesis and stopping time. Such a creative game. Like those those powers are all really creative and they, they designed the world really well to utilize all those different uh abilities. Uh and of course like the Mad Hatter has the most unique ability. Uh because you can't like with the others, you can just kind of uh, use their ability just kind of out in the open on different things, like treasure chests and um, I don't know, other random things, but with the Mad Hatter, it's, it's very, it's much more specific. Um, anyway, I'm just, just musing about that game. I haven't played that game. Uh... I did like a semi speed run of it, just like, but it, it wasn't even like I sat down and it's like, it's like I started a save file, like right after I did the let's play of it, five, five years ago at, at least, no more than that, it's like six years ago, six and a half, um, And I was like, oh, I have this save file. Let me just uh, 
finish this save file real quick and see how quickly I can just beat this game. Somebody has sp speed ran that game. Uh, they've speed ran the PC version, so I guess if I speed run the Wii version, it will be uh, nice. It'll be different. It'll, it'll be somebody doing something different, but I'm, I'm not about to sit down and learn a speed run and practice it and all that jazz. So, yeah, once you have this anvil up here, um, and I'm gonna call it an anvil, even if it's not. Um, clonk, the great metallic sound. Ugh. I don't know. This com this commentary is this commentary is bad. Don't listen to it. Turn the video off right now and go watch PewDiePie. No, I, I'm kidding. Don't watch PewDiePie. Watch the Runaway guys if you have any taste. I don't, I don't get why people like, and then again, I don't like get why people like most things. Like, I don't know. People just like ye people yelling at games, and it's stupid. I like, I like people yelling at Kaizo games, uh, in moderation, of course. Like, people yelling for any amount of time. Oh, I could have done this so much quicker. This was so stupid. Um... This, this really was so stupid. I was just goofing around with this puzzle for way too long. But I had the solution, like, right away. <laughs> anyway, yes, I am going for the jigsaw puzzle piece, of course. Yeah, but when people yell at Kaizo games, it's justified, and it's really funny, because they're getting trolled by the level design, and that's actually something really cool to see happen. Um, I don't know. Yeah, taking a while on, on the- spending a while on this because I'm stupid. Um, and then I, I was like, can, can I just go ahead and- I think I was like getting impatient to, to get the uh, puzzle piece. Cause so I was like, can I just turn into water? And no, I, I can't. I cannot. I cannot- oh, and I cannot squeeze through that opening as an ice block because because you cannot do that. You cannot be stupid. You don't, don't not, do not be a stupid. You know, a stupid, a stupid. Um, I think Spanish class. My teacher like said, "Don't say stupido in Spanish because like it sounds like it just means stupid, but it actually means something meaner." Ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so, somebody on Jeopardy today was a high school Spanish teacher, and I was like, oh boy, you know, good old, good old Spanish, you know, nosotros, and all those conjugations. It's, it's a fun language. <laughs> nosotros, you know, yo. I got, gotta blow my nosotros. You got some medicine? I gotta cool down my nosotros. Uh, anyway. I'm diabetic. I gotta watch my nosotros. <laughs> that was that was terrible. I apologize to anyone with good taste out there for that joke. Um, cuando, cuando is a good word. That's that is indeed a Spanish word. And so is a uh, tortas, which I always see on the side of Mexican food trucks. Okay, so that was fluidity number four, and I didn't start talking about pet deaths. So, all in all, a pretty good episode, wouldn't you say? Go have a cup of tea. Bye.